today we're going to talk about what's going on inside organizations right now. So today, if you're here with me live, it's December 19th, my four-year wedding anniversary. Uh, so shout out to Mrs. Lasavita, Miss Linda. She's probably teaching her, her third graders right now. I, I loved, have loved every minute of my life with you, babe. Uh, but for everybody else who's celebrating my, my anniversary with me, it's December right now. Maybe you're watching this on the replay in January. Everything I'm about to say about what's going on inside organizations right now, it applies. It'll, it'll be applying for the next six, eight weeks. Uh, and I'm sure we'll, we'll put this on the reruns for you. So I want to I wanna talk about what's happening. I want to talk about what that looks like. I'm going to give you some, some case studies, some stories about what's going on inside of companies. And I also want to tell you how you can take advantage of this to use it to your advantage if you are looking for a job. So we're gonna we're gonna hit those we're gonna hit those. I got three points at the end of things that I want you to do to tailor your job search, your job search. So so let's think about this. Like I said, it's December, and what are you doing right now? I mean, aside from watching me, whether you're here with me live or you're watching this on the recording, what are you doing right now? I just got done the kind of the speech bubble still hanging out of my mouth, and I was talking about reflecting. I had to look back at the year. I was thinking about what I was doing. Uh, can I get a show of hands or a, a knock in the chat? What are you doing right now? What what is typical that a lot of people do at the end of the year? Right? They reflect. They think about what's happened. They think about the changes they want to make in their lives. They think about the upcoming year and all that good stuff, right? Maybe you're setting some goals, right? We got some good goal stuff coming for you here soon too, right? Let me know what you're doing in the chat. And so think about it. Companies are, are no different. They're no different. And I don't care when their fiscal year ends. There's something about December and January that makes all companies Think about the new year. And I'm going to explain why that's the case. But they look back, right? They look at the results. They think about their quotas and their targets and their people and the hiring they did and the process that they put in. They think about it. They think about what do they need to do from a planning perspective to go into the next year. And it's a very, very dynamic time right now. And they, they rethink, they plan, they set their goals, and they look at the whole year. They, 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 they really do. And I want to give you, I want to give you a couple stories to illustrate this. Uh, one story, and I don't think I told this story last year, but about a year ago, we had a, a client of mine. Actually, it was somebody who was a client for a number of years. He left his organization, opened up his own company, started to grow that, and had been running it for three or four years or so. Had reached out to me almost, almost to the day, almost to the day, and, uh, and, and, and said, hey, Annie, would you mind spending an hour or two with me? I'd love to pick your brain organizationally about my, or my company. I also might need you to help me, you and Milewalk, help me recruit some people. It's no problem. We get on a, a Zoom session with uh, uh, one or two of his lieutenants and, and me. We spent 90 minutes. Over the course of the 90 minutes, he explained to me that he was just about to win a new contract, which was the biggest one in his, in his company's history. And this is going to require him to hire more people. It was a consulting company, so he was going to need more consulting resources to do this. But he said, but more importantly than knowing I need more consultants to help me implement these solutions is I've got a leadership layer that I have a couple people in place. I know I need more people, but I'm also a little confused about whether I'm leveraging the people that we currently have in the right spots. So I'm not sure that everybody's doing the right things uh, reg you know, related to their skill level. So would you mind talking with me and helping me understand what you would do if this was your company? So I'm not gonna take you through the long 90 minute session. What I want you to know as part of this discussion is that within an hour, we laid out what his new organizational structure should look like, how he needs to move a few people around, how he needs to rearrange some of the roles, meaning like cut people's roles in half, replace them with different activities, take some of the things that they're doing, give them to a new person who's got more experience in those areas. He needed to hire four people at the, at the executive level and so on. And the reason that this is important for you to recognize that this occurs 
extensively, especially in small to medium sized companies at this time of year. And what this does is it creates this incredibly dynamic environment where things are changing almost on a daily basis, not necessarily in a haphazard way, but the fact that between one day and the next, this individual, this CEO, he changed his organizational structure. He knew he was going to have to hire more people. And that's going to change as he hires those people based on who he hires, the skills that he or she has that they bring to the table and how the organizational structure may evolve over the next few months or maybe even the entire first quarter. So, and, and, and let's not even get into the fact that this is a planned organizational restructuring or a planned scaling of sorts, right? Because there's a lot of unplanned things too. We'll get to that in a second. Here's another, here's another story. Yesterday, so Wednesday, I uh, spent the morning with a $100 million construction company in the Chicagoland area. And they are getting primed to grow about 30%. They can already foresee some of the contracts that they have. They, they've, they've put plans in place. I met with the CEO, the president, and the two divisional vice, vice presidents. So four, the four top guys in the company. And now this is a construction company. There's seasonality to this. And in the, in the late spring and the summer is when they really, really ramp up a lot of their construction. But we're talking about it right now. They were looking back at some of the hires that they made throughout the year. And while they felt like they were pretty good at interviewing, they made a couple of mishires. And while it wasn't an excessive number of mishires, it was the particular people that they hired that because it was a mishire, there was a rippling effect that, that caused a, a good amount of damage. And they were trying to foresee uh, how many individuals they would have to be interviewing in order to hire, say, 10 more people in the May time frame. It's five months from now. They're already thinking about it now. The fiscal year doesn't even close at the end of the year. They're one of those organizations that has a, has a fiscal year at a different month throughout the year. But what do they know? They know they got to get out ahead of it. They know for some reason, something's in the water, December and January, people want to do a lot of thinking. Also, organizations know, they know a couple of things about the new year. They know, number one, that it is a highly mobile time of year where a lot of people are leaving. So while these two organizations, these little stories I told you, these are organizations that are deliberately planning and trying to be proactive and get out in front of what it is they want to do. What happens when there's something they have to react to? What happens this time of year? Not only are our employers hiring, but employers are hiring pieces, right? They're being moved around, right? The individuals are being moved around, which means somebody might leave my company who I didn't know was going to be leaving. And now I'm in a panic because one of my most instrumental individuals decided to leave me the third week of January because she's miffed because she didn't get a bigger bonus or I didn't give her the promotion or the raise or the whatever. Right, So this kind of stuff happens. And organizations like this construction company that knew it needed to hire people in May, they recognize that not everybody is going to be moving in May. So there's a lot of people who might, might be thinking about changing jobs now. They want to make sure that they're trying to find the right talent. So what does this all mean to you? Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, there's dynamic natures to what's happening inside the organizations. Companies are planning, they're replanning, they're acting and reacting. That means it's a it's a volatile, not necessarily in a bad way, a volatile time where organizations are hiring, and and they're trying new things. Okay. Now I want you to I want you to uh, I want you to grab onto a couple of concepts here. So. Mm, Got my can I help you uh, mug. Now, one of the things that they know is they are going to have to react. As much as they are deliberate in what they do, organizations know that they're going to need to react to things. Are you getting in front of them in this time where there is a lot of thinking going on? Because there is never a better time where their minds, their corporate minds, are more malleable than right now. Think about when you are considering something. What are you doing? You're, you're trying to plan. You're trying to assess. You're thinking about what might happen. You're about to go into this state of mind where you're open to ideas. 
and they are much, much more receptive to people that they're starting to see now. There's a heightened sense of awareness. They will take a closer look at you if you send your information to them now. They will because they're more active because they're not quite sure what they're going to see. They're not quite sure exactly what they want. So the more you can get in front of them, that's a good thing while their minds, while their corporate minds are malleable. The second thing that I want you to remember about this time of year is when you try, what happens when you try new things? I don't know about you, but whenever I try something new, I break it or I break stuff. Like in, I don't know, in a couple of weeks, this whole floor is going to be filled with stuff that I broke because I tried new things because I was excited to do this, right? I want to make some changes. I want to make some improvements. And I don't know if you've ever heard that expression, like if, you know, if it's not broken, break it. Well, it's kind of that's kind of how I think. That's kind of how a lot of companies think. They want to try new things because they want to they want to grow and they want to be more creative. Well, what happens whenever somebody knows they're about to break something? I don't know about you. I would just love for my stocks in the stock market to rise, rise, rise very highly, and I don't want any risk of downside, right? I don't ever want the market to go down. I just I want all the good and none of the bad. So what a lot of employers do is if they make an organizational mistake and they break something, or maybe they plan for something that doesn't turn out exactly how they wanted, what do they want? Somebody who can fix it. Who can fix it? A versatile person can fix it. And by versatile, I mean people that have multiple skill sets that if I choose wrong, or I start out wrong, or I decide I wanna change my mind, if I've got somebody who's versatile, who's got skills in multiple areas, multifunctional, or that can kind of span the spectrum or the evolution of the career grades, that's the person that I want in case I'm wrong. And versatile people are at a premium in the early months of the year. You got to recognize that. Who cannot fix my organizational misstep? A one-trick pony. So if I hire somebody that's got one skill, they're an ace at it, but they've only got one skill, and I plan for and get it wrong, now I can't do anything with this person. That person, this is, this is their skill. So why am I telling you all this? Because there's some things that I want you to do recognizing this is happening, and it's happening a lot. And any of you that are out there that are in hiring capacities or have influence over units, I'm guessing you're probably nodding with me like, yeah, this happens to me every year. And it should. It's, just, it's not a terrible thing. But this is different than throughout the year where it's the middle of the summertime and I need a person who knows this exact programming language, who this they are, they are the best at this one thing. Sure, things have fallen apart. Right? They've fallen apart. We fixed them. We're on our way. Right? That's just the cycle. It's the evolution that goes that goes on. Right? The construction company knows that it's got to do all of its project planning early in the year because the implementation occurs in the warmer months and the estimates have to be right. You got to get the right contractors. The time frames need to be correct. Right? So 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 think about that. I have a little bit more, I, I could take a little bit more care in getting the one skilled pony, the two skilled pony. But in the beginning of the year, when I'm still trying to figure things out, the more versatile the person, the better. Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind. So here's, here's what I want you to do. I've given you a couple of assets out there that allow you to target organizations where there really isn't a job opening. I almost want you to treat all your submittals right now as if there was no job opening because that will give you an opportunity to flaunt your various skills. So first, first step one, what I want you to do is I want you to get more active with my no opening cover letters. I want you to be reaching into organizations more, much, much more. So normally what I do is I like you to target the organization you want. I like you to target individuals within the organization. And even if, if you can, to the extent, target the role that you want. 
Okay, and that's that's very much like my job search challenge that I've been talking about for the last month. If you're not sure what the job search challenge is, look it up on my YouTube channel where you're, where you're, where you're becoming more and more active in contacting people. I want you to amp that up and be even more active, especially as it relates to reaching into people. You can use the boss hunting cover letter. I have a, uh, a template out there. If you don't know what that is, just look, look up the video. There's a boss hunting cover letter. If you know what the role is, or if you don't know what the role is, and you should be using the one where you don't know what the role is a lot. Okay, I'm gonna get to my second point of why I want you to do that. But I want you to, I want you to, because I want you to be able to flaunt many skills that you bring to the table, not that you were citing this one specific one. I also have a no job opening cover letter. Use those, but I want you to be highly, highly active. What this will do is it will get your information in front of people who are thinking about stuff. And and I want you to highlight your versatility. So lots of times, if you look at my cover letters and the ones that I've given you uh, out in the, in, the, in, the, in the public that you have access to, the ones I just mentioned, I really want you to hit your home run skill normally. However, right now, right now as we're doing this, I want you to really highlight your versatility and I want you to show an array of skills. So I come equipped with technology skills, business analyst skills, team leadership skills, or project management skills, or something like that. That's a triple threat right there. That's a person I love, okay? As opposed to, I'm a technologist who can do this. The person who gives me, who gives me the spectrum, the multifunctional person is far more valuable to me right now and the one that I'm likely to lean towards to want to have discussions with. So you got to highlight your versatility in those cover letters. You're going to need to alter them to do that. And then the third thing is because things are so dynamic right now. So I mentioned I'm planning and replanning. I'm trying to figure out who I want to hire. I guarantee you that lots of companies are going to, in an unexpected nature, lose people that they otherwise would not like to lose. Because, like I said, Jamie doesn't like the fact that she didn't get the raise, right? Susie didn't get the bonus she wanted or the promotion she wanted, right? Hen Henry's, you know, beefing about something. He's tired of his boss. It's, t it's a New Year's resolution time. I'm going to get another job. So I want to make sure that you are following up more frequently than you otherwise would be. And almost without question, every situation that you're in, don't let your follow-ups slip. If somebody says, I'll contact you Tuesday, contact them Wednesday morning. Don't give them much grace, right? If you're trying to follow up on an application or an email that you sent to somebody, you might want to compress the usual week time frame that I that I, I mentioned is a, a, a nice standard to follow throughout the year. You might want to be a little more pushy this time of year. The other thing I would recommend that you do in the follow-ups is when you are rejected, make sure you are following up. I would cut the time frame in half. So if you're rejected from something, I normally like you waiting 30 days to follow up. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about with the rejection, I have a video out there on, on how to get the job after being rejected. What happens is if you're getting rejected on January 2nd, I guarantee you people have left by January 7th, by January 15th, by January 22nd, by January 29th, and so on. You don't need to wait a whole month for this. So you've got to accelerate your, your, your follow-ups. Okay, so just to, just to recap it, we've got a lot of, it's very dynamic out there right now. People are thinking, rethinking, planning, replanning, and all that good stuff. And then as the weeks go by, they're going to get into it, right? I plan it, I get into it, I realize I'm right about this, I'm wrong about that. I make some changes, that changes, right? The people in the organization that I may or may not need, it changes start dates. I'm gonna lose some people and so on. You gotta be more active with the no job opening uh, approach. You got to be highlighting your versatility. So you got to adjust your cover letters to make sure that you are pointing out the plethora of skills that you have, okay? Not just your home run skill or what you're best known for. And you got to be you got to be compressing the time frame where you follow up. All right. Now, I hope that helps. I hope it serves you and I think I think it will make a difference. I really do. And uh, and, and I want to I want to sign off here if you're loving this Click the, little, click the little like button or the thumbs up button. Make sure to share this 
I think it's really important that people hear this message this time of year, December, January, even, even bleeding into February. This is what's going on with companies. So lots of luck with that.